Fox News alert, a legal battle with Democrats ramping up with the president filing a lawsuit now to block House Democrats calling for him to release very certain Trump Organization finan financial records after the House Oversight Committee subpoenaed several years of those records from the Trump Organization. Let's bring in Judge Andrew Napolitano, the Fox News senior judicial analyst and host of the Liberty File on Fox Nation. Judge, good morning. Good morning, Senator. And good to see you. Likewise. All right, so they, they still want these documents. I believe, it's, I, I believe it's six years' worth of financial records from the president, and now the, the president's firing back. All right, so the question is, if the, if the subpoena goes from the House of Representatives to a third party to his accountants, can the president jump in the middle of that and seek to quash the subpoena? The answer is yes, just as if the Congress subpoenaed your records from your accountant mm -hmm. or my records from my accountant or a situation with anybody watching us now. Uh, the complaint actually asks the court to second-guess Congress's motivation, and courts are reluctant to do that because the courts and the Congress are equal branches of government. They don't get in the business of second-guessing the motivation of either. Hmm. However, Congress has to have a legitimate legislative purpose for wanting the president's tax returns and financial records. They can't just get them because he's the president right. and because his predecessors have, uh, have exposed this type of material about themselves. And they can't just get them because they want to torment him. Mm -hmm. They have to have a legitimate purpose. So uh, Congress will have to answer this complaint, establish a purpose. It doesn't have to be a purpose directly out of the Constitution. It could be something tangentially, re tangentially related to what Congress does. And that'll probably uh, suffice. But if they can't show that purpose, then they're going to lose. Then, they, then the subpoena will be quashed. Because it's so new, I want to make sure I get out the details of that. Because his, the president's legal team put out a statement and said that the request for these financial documents lack any legitimate legislative purpose. They call it an abuse of power and say it's just another example of overreach by the president's political opponents. Jay Sekulow said, we will not allow congressional presidential harassment to go unanswered. Well, you know, one person's harassment is another person's oversight. But Congress will have to state for what purpose they want this. Again, it's a, it's a low threshold. Mm. Look, they once investigated the contents of Roger Clemens' urine. What the heck congressional purpose was that? And that was <laughs> upheld. So once they state something even related to a congressional purpose, the court, I think, will allow this uh, to go through. All right, so we will see where all that goes. And we are now left wondering where Democrats go next with the release of the Mueller report and talk of the I word. We know that Democrats' leadership are having a conference call at 5 p.m. today. What do they do? What can they do? You know, I, uh, my insight is the same as almost everyone to whom you and, and Bill and our colleagues on Fox and Friends have been putting this this morning, and that's a judgment call on their part. Do they want to feed the desire of the base of many of them to pursue this to the nth degree, or do they want to look to 2020 and see whether this is going to explode in their faces? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that Congressman Schiff over the weekend and Speaker Pelosi, uh, I, I think on Good Friday, said essentially the same thing. Impeachment will fail without a broad, national, bipartisan consensus for it. That consensus does not exist now. They know how they can develop that consensus, if it is developable. That is to parade all the witnesses who testified for Mueller's grand jury that produced all these allegations uh, in front of the House Judiciary Committee. But that might bore the country to death, and it might explode in their faces. So at this point, it's not legal. It's a political judgment that the majority leadership in the House will make. That's not stopping Adam Schiff from saying this. The fact that you may not be able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt a cr criminal conspiracy doesn't mean that there's an absence of evidence of crime. Well, he keeps pounding on the uh, uh, criminal conspiracy crimes. Yeah. I'd love to know what he knows. Technically, what he said is correct. The standard of, of proof in an impeachment case is not beyond a reasonable doubt. It's a, it's a lower standard. But he also said over the weekend, we're not going to shoot ourselves in the foot by, by attempting to do the impossible. All right. Now there's this fight over the census citizenship uh, question uh, hitting the Supreme Court. Here's Jim Jordan on that. And I'll get your take on the other side, Judge. Why? Why? Why don't we want to know? That's the, that's the question we need answered, and not from you, frank, frankly, from them. Because you can go talk to anyone across this country, and everyone would say, ask that question. The only people opposing it are Democrats in Washington, D.C. 
This is sparking a lot of legal battles over whether or not to include a question about citizenship. Right, so you can get the long form or the short form. The short form basically says these are the forms the census uh, sends out. How many people reside permanently in your household? You fill out the number. The long form has all kinds of questions about how many toilets and what kind of construction and what's the education. And then if the Supreme Court upholds it, it has this question. So it depends on which form you, uh, you get. You only have to answer under the law okay. the number of people residing there. Congress may want to know, and or the, it's not Congress, it's the Commerce Department, may, may want to know the answers to the other questions, but you can't be punished for not answering them. You can be punished for not answering or for answering untruthfully the number of persons residing there. Those that don't want the question argue that undocumented immigrants then would be less likely to fill out the survey. Well, that may be so, and and under the Constitution, undocumented immigrants are counted in the population for the purpose of representation in, in the House of Representatives. And Jim Jordan is uh, arguing that the reason uh, they don't want to answer this question is because they don't want to be exposed right. since they don't belong here uh, in the first place. I think the Supreme Court will give us a hint as to where it stands when they have the oral argument on this. I think all three topics, I think it's, let's see where it all goes. Judge okay. Andrew Napolitano, great to have you. Pleasure, sir. Thank you, Judge.